May our heart's garden of awakening bloom with hundreds of flowers. Thich Nhat Han. Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily. One always has enough time if one applies it well. The most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. Amelia Earhart Enjoy every bit of your life to the fullest. Decide. Much is expected from that to whom much is given. The mind is only a collection of thoughts, but you are the witness of those thoughts. Papaji. Again. We regard independence of outward things as a great good, not so as in all cases to use little, but so as to be contented with little if we have not much, being honestly persuaded that they have the sweetest enjoyment of luxury, who stand least in need of it, and that whatever is natural is easily procured and only the vain and worthless hard to win. Plain fare gives as much pleasure as a costly diet, when once the pain of want has been removed, while bread and water confer the highest possible pleasure, when they are brought to hungry lips. To habituate oneself, therefore, to simple and inexpensive diet supplies all that is needful for health, and enables a man to meet the necessary requirements of life without shrinking, and it places us in a better condition when we approach at intervals a costly fare and renders us fearless of fortune. Now, where can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul? People are often confused about stress and responsibility. Difficulties in life are intended to make us better not bitter. Dan Reeves Never be embarrassed to struggle. There is absolutely no shame in working hard to get to where you want to be. The moment poverty walks in through the door, love and peace toss themselves out of the window. You are not the mind or the body. You are the awareness that observes them. Nisargadatta Maharaj On anxiety. When I see a man anxious, I say, What does this man want? If he did not want something which is not in his power, how could he be anxious? For this reason, a lute player, when he is singing by himself, has no anxiety. But when he enters the theater, he is anxious even if he has a good voice and plays well on the lute. For he not only wishes to sing well, but also to obtain applause. But this is not in his power. Accordingly, where he has skill, there he has confidence. Bring any single person who knows nothing of music, and the musician does not care for him. But in the matter where a man knows nothing and has not been practiced, there he is anxious. What matter is this? He knows not what a crowd is or what the praise of a crowd is. However, he has learned to strike the lowest chord and the highest. But what the praise of the many is, and what power it has in life he neither knows nor has he thought about it. Hence, he must of necessity tremble and grow pale. I cannot then say that a man is not a lute player when I see him afraid, but I can say something else, and not one thing, but many. And first of all I call him a stranger, and say, This man does not know in what part of the world he is, but though he has been here so long, 
he is ignorant of the laws of the state and the customs, and what is permitted and what is not, and he has never employed any lawyer to tell him and to explain the laws. But a man does not write a will, if he does not, does not know how it ought to be written, or he employs a person who does know, nor does he rashly seal a bond or write a security, but he uses his desire without a lawyer's advice and aversion and pursuit and attempt and purpose. How do you mean without a lawyer? He does not know that he wills what is not allowed and does not will that which is of necessity. And he does not know either what is his own or what is or what is another man's. But if he did know, he could never be impeded. He would never be hindered. He would not be anxious. How so? Is any man then afraid about things which are not evil? No. Is he afraid about things which are evils, but still so far within his power that they may not happen? Certainly he is not. If then the things which are independent of the will are neither good nor bad, and all things which do depend on the will are within our power, and no man can either take them from us or give them to us, if we do not choose, where is room left for anxiety? But we are anxious about our poor body, our little property, about the will of Caesar, but not anxious about things internal. Are we anxious about not forming a false opinion? No, for this is in my power, about not exerting our movements contrary to nature. No, not even about this. When then you see a man pale, as the physician says, judging from the complexion, this man's spleen is disordered, that man's liver. So also say, this man's desire and aversion are disordered, he is not in the right way, he is in a fever for nothing else changes the color or causes trembling or chattering of the teeth or causes a man to sink in his knees and shift from foot to foot. For this reason, when Zeno was going to meet Antigonus, he was not anxious, for Antigonus had no power over any of the things which Zeno admired. And Zeno did not care for those things over which Antigonus had power. But Antigonus was anxious when he was going to meet Zeno, for he wished to please Zeno, but this was a thing external. But Zeno did not want to please Antigonus, for no man who is skilled in any art wishes to please one who has no such skill. Should I try to please you? Why? I suppose you know the measure by which one man is estimated by another. Have you taken pains to learn what is a good man and what is a bad man? And how a man becomes one or the other? Why then are you not good yourself? How, he replies, am I not good? Because no good man laments or roans or weeps. No good man is pale and trembles or says, How will he receive me? How will he listen to me? Slave, just as it pleases him. Why do you care about what belongs to others? Is it now his fault if he receives badly what proceeds from you? Certainly. And is it possible that a fault should be one man's and the evil in another? No. Why then are you anxious about that which belongs to others? Your question is reasonable, but I am anxious how I shall speak to him. Cannot you then speak to him as you choose? But I fear that I may be disconcerted. If you are going to write the name of Dion, are you afraid that you would be disconcerted? By no means. Why? Is it not because you have practiced writing the name? Certainly. Well, if you were going to read the name, would you not feel the same? And why? Because every art has a certain strength and confidence in the things which belong to it. Have you then not practiced speaking? And what else did you learn in the school? Syllogisms and sophistical propositions? For what purpose? Was it not for the purpose of discoursing skillfully? And is not discoursing skillfully the same as discoursing seasonably and cautiously and with intelligence, and also without making mistakes and without hindrance, and besides all this with confidence? Yes. When then you are mounted on a horse and go into a plain, 
Are you anxious at being matched against a man who is on foot, and anxious in a matter in which you are practiced, and he is not? Yes, but that person has power to kill me. Speak the truth then, unhappy man, and do not brag, nor claim to be a philosopher, nor refuse to acknowledge your masters. But so long as you present this handle in your body, follow every man who is stronger than yourself. Socrates used to practice speaking. He who talked as he did to the tyrants, to the diecasts. He who talked in his prison. Diogenes had practiced speaking. He who spoke as he did to Alexander, to the pirates, to the person who bought him. These men were confident in the things which they practiced. But do you walk off to your own affairs and never leave them? Go and sit in a corner? and weave syllogisms, and propose them to another. There is not in you the man who can rule a state. Embrace judgment. No matter your outcome, you'll always be judged. So don't live to impress others. Live to impress yourself. He who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. Devote the rest of your life to making progress. Epictetus If you want to be trusted, be honest. Far more important than the ability to pick the right one is the strength to walk away from the wrong one. You are the only person on earth who can use your ability. Zig Ziglar The earth, saith the poet, doth often long after the rain so is the glorious sky, often as desirous to fall upon the earth, which argues a mutual kind of love between them. And so, say I, doth the world bear a certain affection of love to whatsoever shall come to pass. With thine affection shall mine concur, O world. The same, and no other, shall the object of my longing be which is of thine. Now that the world doth love it is true indeed, so is it as commonly said, and acknowledged ledged, when according to the Greek phrase, imitated by the Latins, of things that used to be, we say commonly, that they love to be. Time is your most valuable resource. There are no refunds or second chances for the time you waste. You will have to make very practical decisions about what you want from life and what you're willing to give up. And if you don't make them, then life will make them for you. Wisdom outweighs any wealth. Sophocles. Never force. Don't beg and don't chase. What is life? It is a flash of a firefly in the night. It is a breath of a buffalo in the winter time. It is as the little shadow that runs across the grass and loses itself in the sunset. Breathing in, I calm body and mind. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is the only moment. Tishnat Han. Nothing can happen unto thee, which is not incidental unto thee, as thou art a man, as nothing can happen either to an ox, a vine, or to a stone, which is not incidental unto them, unto everyone in his own kind. If therefore nothing can happen unto anything, which is not both usual and natural, why art thou displeased? Sure, the common nature of all would not bring anything upon any that were intolerable. If therefore it be a thing external that causes thy grief, 
know that it is not that properly that doth cause it, but thine own conceit and opinion concerning the thing, which thou mayest rid thyself of when thou wilt. But if it be somewhat that is amiss in thine own disposition, that doth grieve thee, mayest thou not rectify thy moral tenets and opinions. But if it grieve thee, that thou doest not perform that which seemeth unto thee right and just, why doest not thou choose rather to perform it than to grieve? But somewhat that is stronger than thyself doth hinder thee. Let it not grieve thee then, if it be not thy fault that the thing is not performed. Yea, but it is a thing of that nature, as that thy life is not worth the while, except it may be performed. If it be so, upon condition that thou be kindly and lovingly disposed towards all men, thou mayest be gone. For even then, as much as at any time, art thou in a very good estate of performance, when thou doest die in charity with those that are an obstacle unto thy performance. Above all things, never be afraid. The enemy who forces you to retreat is himself afraid of you at that very moment. Being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage. If you make a mistake and do not correct it, this is called a mistake. Confucius Do not chase women. Instead, focus on your growth, values, and cultivating kindness. The right person will find their way to you at the perfect moment without the need for chasing. Do not tell anyone what you think or what you know. Keep your secrets to yourself because a friend of today could be an enemy by tomorrow. The world is a mirror forever reflecting what you are doing within yourself. Neville Goddard If ever thou sawest either a hand or a foot or a head lying by itself, in some place or other, as cut off from the rest of the body, such must thou conceive him to make himself as much as in him lieth that either is offended with anything that has happened, whatsoever it be, and as it were divides himself from it, or that commits anything against the natural law of mutual correspondence and society among men, or he that commits any act of uncharitableness. Whosoever thou art, thou art such, thou art cast forth, I know not whither out of the general unity, which is according to nature. Thou went born indeed apart, but now thou hast cut thyself off. However, herein is matter of joy and exultation, that thou mayst be united again. God hath not granted it unto any other part, that once separated and cut off, it might be reunited and come together again. But behold, that goodness how great and immense it is, which hath so much esteemed man. As at first he was so made, that he needed not except he would himself have divided himself from the whole. So once divided and cut off, it hath so provided and ordered it, that if he would himself he might return and grow together again, and be admitted into its former rank and place of a part, as he was before. Rest, don't care. If you're right, but you're obnoxious about it, people won't see you as the good guy. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Socrates. Never take the responsibility that does not belong to you. Sometimes you just have to let go, even if you are right.
In every moment, you are free to change your perspective. Muji. Let it be thy perpetual meditation how many physicians who once looked so grim and so theatrically shrunk their brows upon their patients are dead and gone themselves. How many astrologers, after that in great ostentation, they had foretold the death of some others. How many philosophers, after so many elaborate tracts and volumes concerning either mortality or immortality. How many brave captains and commanders, after the death and slaughter of so many. How many kings and tyrants, after they had with such horror and insolency abused their power upon men's lives, as though themselves had been immortal. How many, that I may so speak, whole cities, both men and towns, Helice, Pompeii, Herculaneum, and others innumerable are dead and gone. Run them over also, whom thou thyself, one after another, hast known in thy time to drop away. Such and such a one took care of such and such a one's burial, and soon after was buried himself. So one, so another, and all things in a short time. For herein lieth all indeed, ever to look upon all worldly things as things for their continuance, that are but for a day, and for their worth, most vile and contemptible. As for example, what is man, that which but the other day when he was conceived was vile snivel, and within few days shall be either an embalmed carcass or mere ashes. Thus must thou, according to truth in nature, truly consider how man's life is but for a very moment of time, and so depart meek and contented, even as if a ripe olive falling should praise the ground that bare her and give thanks to the tree that begat her. A salary is the drug they give you to forget your dreams. Go where you are appreciated, not just tolerated. When meditation is mastered, the mind is unwavering like the flame of a lamp in a windless place. Bhagavad Gita Believe nothing you hear and only one half that you see. We must bring our own light to the darkness. You do not have to be concerned about your journey. You have already arrived. Eckhart Tolle Most justly have these things happened unto thee. Why dost not thou amend? Oh, but thou hadst rather become good tomorrow than to be so today. The only constant in life is change. Embrace it and you'll grow. Success is a loner's journey. You must learn to accept loss and make compromises. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that is all. Oscar Wilde. Life did not intend to make us perfect. Whoever is perfect belongs in a museum. Courage is like a muscle. We strengthen it by use. The only thing that separates you from the truth is the belief in separation. Muji. Mastery. Self-mastery is a vital component of freedom. If you do not have mastery over yourself, you will never be truly free from conflict, dilemma, or self-doubt. Freedom and self-mastery allow you to be self-determining, which in turn empowers you to be the master of your own life, your own journey, and your own destiny. The skill of mastery gives you the ability to control your emotions, your perspectives and your reactions. 
while self-mastery makes it capable for you to determine your own actions and not allow external actions to control you. Learning how to be a master of your emotions frees you from negative mood dysregulation while increasing your ability to better manage your reactions and coping strategies. Self-mastery is seen as the final goal in living a stoic life. To have mastery over yourself is to truly know and accept the things you can and cannot control. Just because you can't see the point behind a challenging time doesn't mean there isn't one. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. John F. Kennedy Never sacrifice these three things, your family, your heart, or your dignity. How others see you is not important. How you see yourself means everything. You can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Zig Ziglar Let this be thy only joy and thy only comfort. From one sociable kind action without intermission to pass unto another, God being ever in thy mind. A man must be big enough to admit his mistakes, smart enough to profit from them, and strong enough to correct them. You can fall in love more than once. It's easier to do a job right than to explain why you didn't. Martin Van Buren Act as if it were impossible to fail. Learn to be sufficient and realize you are immortal. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Eckhart Tolle The form of the Athenian's prayer did run thus. O rain, rain, good Jupiter, upon all the grounds and fields that belong to the Athenians. Either we should not pray at all, or thus absolutely and freely and not everyone for himself in particular alone. Spend your first 20 years worrying what people think about you. You spend your next 20 years swearing that you don't care what people think about you. You spend the next 20 years realizing that they aren't thinking about you. Ask questions from your heart and you will be answered from the heart. To be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving peace. George Washington You want to control someone? All you have to do is make them feel afraid. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. To dwell in the here and now does not mean you never think about the past or responsibly plan for the future. The idea is simply not to allow yourself to get lost in regrets about the past or worries about the future. If you are firmly grounded in the present moment, the past can be an object of inquiry, the object of your mindfulness and concentration. You can attain many insights by looking into the past but you are still grounded in the present moment. Tishnat Han
There is not any man that is so happy in his